Hi guys, Keith here from Borneo. Thank you so much for joining me today as I talk about the tips and tricks on how to save your dying plants or even how to propagate them just by using water. So why save your plants in water or why propagate them in water? A lot of people tend to cut their plants and or save their plants by putting them in a new batch of soil. This is what we're usually told to do. Always plonk it in the next pot of soil after cleaning your rhizomes or your stems. I, I have tried it myself and, and I won't recommend it because I too have lost a lot of plants uh, to this process. So I, ever since I discovered water propagation, I think this is almost a foolproof method on saving a lot of your plants. And I really hope this video can help some of you. You can use anything really from these containers which I kept over the years or even any glass bottles. This is just a spaghetti bottle over here enemy jars you have lying around your house. So first things first, you need to make sure your rhizome or your stem is not completely rotten. If it's completely mushy, you just need to chuck it out and say bye bye. But you would want to check that if there are still firm parts or hard parts just like this one over here, you then need to cut off any bits of rot and clean it with a lot of people use hydrogen peroxide which you can find in your local stores but I myself am too lazy to go, go through the whole process so I just use either dish washing soap or hand soap. I'll just clean it and then just put it in a new jar of water like this. Use just dish washing soap, dish washing soap, <laughs> sorry, dish washing soap. There was a tongue twister there. Dish washing soap, dish wash. I can't really. <laughs> if your plants still have a little bit of rot on them and you do put them in a jar of water, I would suggest changing the water every day. Usually it's not recommended, but this is only if you ha still have rot within the stem itself, within the rhizome itself, then you would need to change the water every day until you see new roots developing. And then you can actually stop. Once you actually see the roots developed, then you don't really need to change the water daily. I don't actually change it daily. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It really depends on whether the water is looking murky or whether you have any mosquito larvae in here. Because at times, of course, being in a tropical country, you will get a lot of mosquitoes hovering about and then breeding in the water. So always be mindful and always check these containers if there are any pests. One thing I did not mention is obviously spider mites. Although your plants are <laughs> developing in water, so you might not have too many pests within the water themselves. Of course, as I mentioned, look for any signs of mosquito larvae because this is the most common when you are propagating with water. You can also buy anti, what do you call that? Anti mosquito larvae solutions <laughs> from your garden centers. Uh, for the leaves, sometimes you do get spider mites and when I have not been observing my plants, I've noticed some of them completely covered and like this philodendron El Choco over here, it has been developing in water as you can see the roots, but <laughs> when I did not notice the other day, they were all covered in spider mites. I've already washed the leaves clean, but of course they have a little bit of damage to them. So just be aware of your plants. Usually, those are the only two you have to look out for, which are spider mites and mosquito larvae. Usually the plants would produce these hormones in order to produce the roots. So the water is actually concentrated with the hormones produced by these plants. And therefore you don't really want to chuck out the water every single day.
what you want to do is if it gets low, you just top it up again. And don't use too much water for just a small plant. Always find a smaller jar as you want the rooting hormones from the plants to be more concentrated. Okay, so obviously this is a bigger cutting. So I've used a bigger jar for that because if not, it will topple over. You don't have to fill the water to the top like I've done, but so far the roots have come up pretty beautifully. Uh, this is the Paraiso Verde. And honestly, there's no fixed rule on how to water propagate. You don't have to be so, <laughs> so worried about it. Let's talk about fertilizing. Usually when you're just starting off with water propagation and there are new roots, the plants would, as I mentioned, produce their own hormones so you don't have to add any fertilizers as it might damage the roots, it might be too concentrated for them. But some people do like to continue growing their plants in water. I know a few friends who actually grow everything in water, they don't use soil anymore. So what you want to do is pick up a liquid fertilizer from your garden center or from your nurseries and just read the instructions, instructions on the bottle and add it to your, your jars. Only when the roots are developed, of course. Don't add it in the beginning stages. I'm sure some of you already know this, but for those of you who don't, there are two types of roots. One, water roots, and the other, soil roots. Plants from the soil cannot be taken out and plonked into a jar of water because all those roots will rot. Whereas, if you already have water roots like this over here, this is the Philodendron Florida Beauty, and these roots, once placed in the soil, will be converted over to soil roots. So one thing good about propagating your plants in water is that when you do transfer them back into the soil, they would have a higher chance of survival rather than just taking a cutting or trying to save your plants in a new batch of soil. So usually I would place all my cuttings or plants I'm trying to save over here because it is under the polycarbonate sheet and it allows bright indirect light throughout the day. So now it's still uh, in the morning, whereas when it gets towards the afternoon, a lot of bright light will hit this part here. And so far they've all done pretty well. So look for a spot in your house which actually has bright indirect light throughout the day and not harsh direct light, especially in the afternoon because that would scorch your plants or even kill them. So I just wanted to touch on repotting once more because I really want to make this clear that plants which are grown in water can obviously be transferred into the soil with a higher success rate, but do be aware it's a slower process than planting it directly in the soil from the beginning. So if you're taking a cutting and you do want to root it in the soil, I would always say place it in a jar first, let the roots come out and then put it in the ground because you don't want to lose beautiful cuttings just like this over here. This actually broke in the wind the other day. Um, yeah, as I mentioned, it's a Paraiso Verde, Philodendron Paraiso Verde, and it was such a shame, but I knew I didn't have to worry because after testing out all these water propagation techniques, I, I didn't worry at all that it would die on me. I have tried propagating plants in soil before. Obviously, there is a success rate there as well, but not all the time. You will lose a lot along the way. So if you are not so adventurous, water propagation is definitely the way forward. Lastly, I just wanted to talk about some of the genuses that you can save or propagate in water. You can't propagate every single plant in water. Most of the time you can, but there are some which you can't. You usually have to take cuttings from a healthy plant. Most of the plants I took it from were either, well, rotting <laughs> or they broke off in the wind. So there is not really a fixed rule on when to take them or what you can do, always try it out, you know? Some of the plants, I really thought there was no hope for them and look at them now, they're actually surviving, putting out new leaves and I know I was supposed to do it today, putting all these into soil but because I wanted to do a video for you guys on water propagation so I've actually left that and I'll do it tomorrow but let me just get to it. So I've tried propagating peperomias in the water, we have the silver 
silver ripple over here. We also have the Peperomia polybotria teardrop. So these all decided to rot just all of a sudden. I think maybe it's due to my overwatering, of course, or some pests in the soil. And now, as you can see, they've already developed the roots and new leaves. Some philodendrons, philodendron gloriosums, they've actually rooted really well as well and put out new leaves. I'm quite surprised. So really, water propagation is such a great method to save your plants. Most of these were from rot. So no matter how good your mix is, as I said, there will always be something like in the soil or one day you overwatered something too much. Um, I mean, overwatered is too much, but if you overwatered something, you, you just never know uh, what's going to happen. So this is just really a foolproof method on how to save your plants. As I mentioned, Anthurium Crystal Hope. Uh, I won't bore you with every single one, but there are some behind me here like the Philodendron Subincism, I think. You can even do begonias. I know a lot of you like to grow begonias, and these are the roots. Yeah. These are the roots. This is called the Begonia U504, I think. It's quite a common one, but you can try it out with different begonias as well. And the Pink Princess. This also snapped in the wind, and I placed it in the jar the other day. This is just a spaghetti jar, so you can really use whatever you have around your house. And it's already produced a new leaf. But just be mindful that when you do propagate plants in water, you know it's going through a change again, so the leaves produced will not be that big. But if you want to continue growing them in water, like I said earlier on, do add fertilizer to it, because obviously this is already established, or you can transfer them into the ground like I will do after this video. Oh. One more thing, just gonna move these out of the way and show you this massive, massive <laughs> philodendron lacerum that it was going, it was growing too high in the garden so I needed to chop it down and now I'm just propagating it in water. As you can see, I cut off a lot of the roots because they did snap but it has now started to produce I think some water roots yeah I only just did it but I can already see things happening so honestly I really believe in water propagation or saving your plants with water honestly it is just an amazing amazing thing to know Well, thank you so much for joining me guys. I hope I didn't bore you with too many details. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below and I'll try my best to get back to you. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye!